Well, the organ that was here before was a small molar organ, three, three manuals, about uh, 29 ranks, and um, it was done in 1960. The, we knew that we needed a new one because the uh, molar had a number of mechanical problems. So um, we had always thought that it would be wonderful to have a new organ, but we hadn't done anything particular about asking the congregation or doing anything about it. Interestingly enough, the rector happened to be here that morning, and I walked down to his office and I said, I'm not sure what your schedule says on Friday at 10 o'clock, but you're going with me and we're going up the street um, to visit this family. So we did on Friday at 10 o'clock, and the meeting took exactly 23 minutes. I happened to just look at my watch when I got out of the car, and I looked at my watch when I got back in the car, and it had been 23 minutes. We walked into their house, and it was the husband and wife and the rector and myself, and um, they started by saying, how was your vacation trip? And I said, it was great. And they said, well, uh, I guess you know why you're here. And I said, well, I hope I know why I'm here, but I'm not really sure I know why I'm here. And they said, well, we've decided to give an organ to St. Peter's. And they handed uh, the rector and myself two pieces of paper stapled together, which was the agreement. This gift is a bright, outright gift to the parish. And um, it was for a substantial amount of money. And um, I said, are there restrictions on this gift? Do we have to have a particular builder? Does it have to be an American builder? Does it have to be whatever? And they said no. He said, this gift is how we feel about St. Peter's, and it's not about our family, so this will be an anonymous gift. I had done enough research in the years before that to know that I really wanted uh, Mander to build an instrument if we ever had the opportunity to do it. Um, I was especially taken by their instrument at John's College, Cambridge, which I had gotten to play for an hour or so one day when I was in England. Um, and I thought it was a remarkable combination of an instrument that would work for recitals, but also, most importantly for us, be the organ, the organ that supports the liturgy. So when we came back from the visit to this family and I picked up the phone and I dialed Mander Organs in London and John Mander happened to pick up the phone and that's exactly how it happened. The organ is, um, first of all, it's a tracker instrument, um, which John and I agreed was what we wanted and what he really wanted to do. There was a discussion about whether to make it a two-manual instrument or a three-manual instrument uh, because St. Peter's is not an enormous building. Um, if it were a two-manual instrument, it would have been a sizable instrument. It would have been 44 ranks. And I felt that if we were going to have an instrument that large, that um, so many of the pieces that you play in the organ literature really require three keyboards, that we really should go that route. So when we decided that, then we also found that, that we could do 232s if we, <laughs> if we were uh, judicious. John laughed about that. And so we, we ended up with a three manual organ of 57 uh, ranks. And the way that it's laid out is that the choir and the grate are on one level above the console and the swell is on another level above them and all of the pedal is on the opposite side of the chancel. And we had a little worry because the trackers from the pedal come out and they have to do a 90 degree turn and go through the floor because the floor is concrete and steel. So they go down uh, to the ceiling of the room below and they make another 90 degree and they run across the top of the ceiling. They make another 90 degrees and they come up the wall behind the choir stalls and into the pedal chamber. Um, and we had some initial concern that that run might be long enough that there might be a infinitesimal time delay, but in fact that didn't prove to be the case. And one of the reasons I wanted Mander to do it, besides the essential reason of the quality and sound of the instrument, was that they have done such beautiful restoration 
work in England and uh, original work also, so that I knew that the cases would look as though that was what was always intended for this building. The, the great thing that John Mander did with this organ is that um, when you hear it in the space, even with the full organ going, you have the sense of hearing a major organ in a major room, and yet this instrument doesn't overwhelm this room and you don't ever feel as though you're being um, overwhelmed by the sound of the organ. It um, has great touch on the manuals, very sensitive, and um, I think it's, it's great fun to play. At the Organ, a weekly show about the classical organ and its music, heard on organlive.com every Sunday or streaming from our website anytime. Just point your browser to attheorgan.com for more information.